If you think corporations bought free speech before Now that they're human, they'll buy even more Yeah, their money has free speech Welcome to the Alliance for Democracy the Populist Dialogues. This cable access program is part of our effort to create a just society based on an actual sustainable economy. Today our guest is Indira Trejo, Trejo. Trejo uh, who is Global Impact Coordinator with the United Farm Workers Union. She's based in Tacoma, Washington, is visiting important support workers at the farmer-owned owned Dara Gold uh, dear, so welcome to the program. Thank you for having me today. Yeah, uh, okay. yeah. so uh, talk about talk about your Dara Gold milk and uh, why, why are you concerned about Dara Gold? So we actually had um, five years ago there was uh, a group of workers that came from one of the farms um, in Pasco, Washington, and they came to us asking for help about you know, they just wanted some help because they weren't having access to lunch breaks, rest breaks, clean drinking water. Um, a lot of them were verbally abused. So, you know, they all got together and said, let's go to the UFW because that's the only organization that, you know, was close to them at that time. And um, we collected cards there. And uh, the next thing you know is we went and talk to, to, to the farm um, owners, but these workers got um, fired and blacklisted. So that's how the, 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 the story of this dairy gold started. Um, after that happened, other workers from different dairies started you know, reaching out to us. Hey, you know, we're experiencing the same conditions. This is happening to us too. You know, what can we do? So um, we were surprised to hear about, you know, all the different farms that this was happening. You know, we thought it was going to be like a couple of them, but the reality is that it was a lot of them. And um, so, the, so you were you were finding that these uses were industry wide; they weren't just localized with Dairy necessarily. Correct. Um, and I mean, Dairy Gold has five hundred and fifty farms, so I mean, it's you know, and they're all through. Washington State, Oregon, and Idaho. So we heard, um, you know, workers will come and, yeah, you know, the, the, the milk truck that comes is the one with a, a winky eye. And um, so then we're like, oh, so there's a common denominator here, you know? All these farms are, you know, supplying milk to Dairy Gold. Okay, yeah, mm -hmm. I, I uh, grew up here in Portland. I'm a native Portlander, and I've always heard Dairy Dar 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 Gold. And I have always assumed it was just a small local dairy, and somewhere I didn't know where it was, and that they had a bunch of cows uh, and produced milk. But actually, that's not the arrangement, is it? No, it's it's 550 different um, farms. They're part of this cooperative, and um, they all supply milk. They have seven plants throughout the Pacific Northwest. And that's where they produce their fluid milk, their um, dry milk, their cottage cheese, you know, all the cheeses they produce that are uh, butter. So, yeah. Okay. There's right. it, 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 and Dairy Gold itself, though, is owned by the farmers. Is correct. That, is that right? Okay. That is correct. Right. Okay. But definitely not owned by the farm workers. That, so that, they have a clear division. That is true. Right. Okay. All right. And uh, so, so talk, talk a little bit more about the conditions in these dairies or in, in the, on the farms themselves. Number one, you said there's 500 farms? Over 550. Okay. Mm -hmm. And where, where are they? So um, a big majority, especially because we're, uh, our office is in Hermiston, right, here in Oregon, we had... Um, a big chunk of them are like in the Yakima Valley, right? So it's Sunnyside, Pasco, Ma Mountain, if I'm saying it right, um, Ma Mountain, um, Washington. You know, I speak to the workers every day, and that's how they call it. So, but I'm sure that I don't know if I'm, you know, if it's necessarily right. But yeah, so this Yakima Valley area, 
Um, they have some in, in, in um, Northern Washington as well. Um, so they're all over the place, but the big majority of them are in, in the Yakima Valley. Oh, okay. And is, but are there some of these farms, dairy farms, here in Oregon? In the yeah, area? there is. Okay. Um, Wood, Woodland? Woodland. Yeah. Okay. And um, those are the ones that, you know, we've heard, we have contact with workers. And also um, Idaho and Jerome. Um, there's different little towns that, you know, they're located. But those, that's the, the realm that we have, you know, workers um, that okay. have come to us. Okay. Yeah. It's, so, what was it really like to work at a dairy? These guys are, you know, they have usually from two to three shifts. Some work eight hours, some work 12. It all depends, right? It, it depends on also the size of the, of the farm. So there's um, 300 cow farms, and then there's you know 7,000 cow farms. And in the 300 um, cow farms, for example, you know the issues would be that yeah they don't have clean drinking water. There's two two workers for 300 um, cows, um, and so they are not done. They can't they can't go home. And why? Because if you don't milk cows, I mean, it, they go crazy. You have to constantly be milking cows at least twice a day so that, you know, they can be um, healthy because that is the other thing, right? So if you don't milk them, then they get sick. Cows get sick, they develop um, a disease called mastitis, and their udders get infected with pus, and, and, and those are, um, you know, one of the constant stories that we hear, right? There's not enough staff to take care of all those cows, therefore they don't get, you know, milked on time, and then they get sick, and, you know, what do they do? That's, that's a big problem, right? So, that's that. These guys are work, you know, they're working under pressure because they have to milk all these cows, and they don't have, you know, break time, no lunch time, you know, some of them, um, have told me right in is like we know that we have to go to the bathroom before we get there and that our only chance is going to be after because there is no time whatsoever to do that and we recently um shared a story with um with our supporters about you know this worker he he his shift was eight hours but was getting home like two to three hours later and his fiance was really worried about him because she was like, why is he getting home late, right? But um, she asked her, her father-in-law to take her to the farm um, to, to find out what he was doing, right? This is a young couple, they, you know, they were trying, she was trying to find out what he was doing. And another thing that she was worried about is that she will put his, his, his food for his lunch and he will bring it all back. So that and, and her words were, he looked like he had been assaulted by the time that he got home. Um, he was losing a lot of weight, you know, he, he just didn't look, you know, the same from the day that he started working. Um, and when she went in there, she found out, you know, that he didn't have any, he didn't have time to eat because his responsibility was to milk um, eight 210 um, cow corrals a day. And he was given eight hours, and if he didn't finish in eight hours, then he will have to stay, but he wasn't even gonna get paid for that extra time. So, you know, she went in and what she did was she will go to the farm and help him out. She wasn't getting paid for that, but she did that just so that, you know, he can come home and spend some time with her and wasn't, you know, dead tired. And so, so, so Derek was really getting his labor from two people for the price of one. For the price of one. Okay. And she was helping him out, and, and then another hope is they were really, you know, struggling with money. So her hope was to get, you know, hired. Um, and everybody will tell her, "Well, you're really good at this, right? You, you know, just go and, and apply. Like, tell the owner that you want to work here." So she did, and she's like, "Well, I'm going to be watching you." And you know, innocent enough, you know, she's like, "Okay, I'm I'm going to prove her that you know I deserve this job." And um, so next thing you know, the day that she was applying for the job, her fiance got hurt, smashed by three cows. 
and fractured his ribs. So that day, what she did, she took over him because he was waiting for seven hours to get medical attention. And, but the cows can't wait, right? So mm -hmm. she's like, well, you guys have to figure it out how those cows are gonna get milked. And she, she did the job for him and um, you know, the, he could only come back and do light duty work. So he was dismissed um, and she asked for a job and you know, they, they told her that based on the numbers of her finances, she wasn't gonna get a job there. Okay. <laughs> so uh, and, that's and, and what in terms of you know he's injured on the job. So what 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 benefits does he have? Health care? Who takes care of all those bills? Um, they do. They do. They have no health care benefits. You know these. Yeah, they don't have any. They they were hoping that you know L and I will probably help them because you know they were hurt in the job or. Put a workers' claim. Um, LNI is labor and industries. Labor and industries, correct. So labor and industries. Like or right. So um, they, but when he found out, you know that if uh, he was, he went to the doctor and the doctor told him, "You're only going to be able to do this light duty work for now, and I don't know um, when uh, you can go back to normal duty." He went back to, to the to the farm and talked to the owner, and you know um, he was told that there was no light duty work for him, so you know to figure it out. And yeah. you know the biggest issue um, in agriculture is that unfortunately, you know, farm workers are not aware of their rights. They're not educated about what they can do, and um, you know he he just left. I mean, there was nothing else that he could do. And I mean, these couples—they were desperate for help because you know they needed, they were behind in their rent and all that stuff. So it really affects, you know. Well, this yeah, it's a cascading. It, it, it cascades down. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, um, well, what's the situation legally? What what law structure is there regulating dairies? So, labor, I mean, you know, we don't, in, in Washington State, we don't have um, laws protecting, I mean, farm workers, right? Um, they were excluded since, what is it, the... Yeah, right. Yeah. So, they really don't have the protection. Um, I mean, one of the biggest concerns of workers is they go to to this government agencies like labor and industries and they go there but they don't get the help right they they are hoping that you know they will receive the medical attention but there's been a lot of cases where we hear you know um the state is really not not you know doing helping them out all the way. Yeah. So. Well, like so many, like so many agencies, I'm sure this is the case there too. You have to know how to play the game. Right. And we wouldn't really expect that farm workers would know how to how right. to play that game. Uh, if, if I was doing, it, I would not play the game. Right. You know, and if, unless you have advocates like a union, right. for instance, uh, you can get stepped on. Very like that's yeah. Okay. Uh, so, uh, why hasn't uh, this story, or these kinds of stories, or this whole general problem, why has that become known to the general population? So, um, we have, you know, reached out. Um, we visited uh, Dairy Gold headquarters a couple of times. You know, um, a lot of uh, the community came out in support for the workers. Um, but then, um, somehow, you know, it, it just hasn't been. Um, a lot of consumers, you know, were outraged about what was happening and they themselves um, filed a claim, you know, knowing that, you know, Dairy Gold in, in their reports has said that, um, you know, they treat very humanely their animals and, and the workers. And you know, when consumers you know found out about what was really going on, you know, they themselves um, did did a lawsuit that was recently actually dismissed. 
So that's been the action that you know the community has taken on that. Um, what we really want is, you know, Dairy Gold, everybody knows Dairy Gold in the Pacific Northwest, right? Um, it is hard to find another um, supplier, you know, for families uh, to, besides Dairy Gold. So what we want is for them to acknowledge what's going on and to find solutions with us, right? Um, and, and, and we've been reaching out to, to retailers so that they're aware about that this is going on so that they can, you know, so that, you know, the U of W and Dairy Gold can um, come together and put a solution to this problem because there's, you know, hundreds and hundreds of workers out there that are struggling every day. Um, they're afraid of being injured. They're, um, I mean, they go to work and they have to take their own drinking water. Um, they, sometimes they're like, in Dara, we don't go to the bathroom because one, they don't provide toilet paper. And two, I mean, it's like, who wants to go to those bathrooms? They're really not clean at all. All the, every day they're working around manure and stuff like that. I mean, it's just very unsanitary for them, right? Um, they're not provided with uh, protect, uh, equipment to protect themselves from the harsh chemicals that they use at the dairies. I mean, cows need the, their, um, what's their hooves? Yeah, Am I saying that right? Um, are, they have to put them in, in, into this chemical so that they can get cleaned up, right? And I mean, the workers, they, they're telling us in Dara, I mean, we come out of there with our eyes, you know, watery eyes, and we get headaches, but they don't provide us with none of that. Although they're taking out of our check, you know, money that says equipment, and we don't get anything. So, I mean, that's, we just want, you know, Dairy Gold to work with us, the farmers, in, in a way where we can, you know, resolve those issues that are very simple. This is something that, you know, if we all had a conversation, then I'm sure that we can, we can solve it, right? We, I mean, it's production for them, I mean, there's so many injuries going on at, at the dairies. Imagine these workers are corralling and milking 1,400-pound um, cows, and they get kicked, they get smashed. You know, now with winter, this is the most dangerous time for them, right? Uh, they fall, um, and, and I mean, and this is costly on, on, on farmers as well. They have to pay, you know, for the insurance on that. So why not come together? you know, have a conversation, let's talk about solutions, you know. I meet with workers every week, and we all discuss, like, the way that, you know, it helps them maybe clean the udder better so that it doesn't get infected, or how the, the little strategies, you know, that by working in these degrees for a while, they, they figure out and then they share, because some of them have no idea, and then others are, ex you know, and, and they all come together, and I'm like, if we have this opportunity with Dairy Gold and the farmers to, to discover those solutions, I mean, why not put them in place and, and, yeah. and, and help these workers? Yeah. Okay. They love working at the dairies, right? This is, this is, their, this is their life. Yeah, it, 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 would, it would appear that um, you're doing a great service by, by providing the workers a, the ability to communicate with each other about their common problems. Yeah. And one of the one of the major sources of oppressing people is to keep them disunified and not sharing, not understanding their common common problems. Right now we all get together, you know, at least once or twice a week. Um, sometimes I call it our support group, right? Um, well, last week we all got together and um, we were all in tears. We had a, uh, somebody come in um, that was attacked by a bull, and he uh, fell in coma for two months. And you know his entire life changed because of this. And he shared his story with with all the workers. And you know the worker that had been smashed by three cows uh, recently you know, was just in tears because he's like, that could have been me. And I have a little baby. 
And so then they realize, you know, the impact of, I mean, their safety, right? And it was just, I mean, for them to share this, I mean, and they're all men, you know? Um, to me, it's just like, well, they're uh, coming together and sharing those stories is they really get empowered. And when they ask me, well, Endura, how are we gonna change this? We're like, well, we're gonna make it happen. We don't know how, but we're gonna make it happen. Because we all know that your concern is, is your safety. Okay. And have you, uh, have you had uh, uh, a drive to actually unionize, or do you have people assigned cards uh, wanting the union? We actually haven't. So it's 550 farmers, right? And- um, That's hard to organize. Right, and you know, we have limited resources, and and at this point, you know, many I, we want this to come from the workers. What do they want? And um, now, workers, what they're really asking for is training. They really want to know how to navigate. You know, the um, government agencies. They really want to know how they can be safer at work. Um, so this is something that we're all working together with. They actually came up with, um, with a vision. And for them, all they want is to work where they can be respected, where they can be treated with, dig um, they can have dignity, you know, for doing what they do. Um, they also, I mean, they're proud of, you know, milking, uh, of producing the milk that, you know, goes to, to families around the world. They are aware of that. So they want to do this with, um, they want to make sure that they're not milking cows that are sick, for example, you know? So, so the best way is like, hey, if, if we can get trained to do our job better, we, we want that. So that's, that's what we're providing them, that's that opportunity. Okay, good. And so in, in the last few minutes here, talk about what our viewers could do. So one of the things that I would recommend is, you know, go to our webpage, um, learn more about this um, issue. It's, uh, you can visit www.ufw.org. Also like us on Facebook and Twitter. Um, one of the things that we're asking you guys is to send um, letters to retailers, right? Um, we've been to uh, Fred Meyer's headquarters, you know, to talk to, to the CEO, Unfortunately, that you know we didn't get to see him, but we did talk to to their public affairs, and we're trying to you know to communicate this urgency to to consumers because they're the ones that are buying this milk, right? And and you, you have the right to know where your milk is coming from, right? And and what are the conditions that these workers have to are working in order to produce those those products that everybody loves. So um, we're asking you to send those letters to, um, to the retailers so that you know, Dairy Gold can sit down with us and have a conversation about how we are going to help these workers. Okay. Would, uh, would our viewers go to your website and actually find the addresses where they can send these letters? Yeah, we usually, you can, uh, it will say take action. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a, it's not a petition, but it's like, you know, send a letter to um, this last um, alert, um, that's what we call them, um, was sent to the board member uh, David Baker Lewis um, from Kroger, which is a parent company of Fred Myers. Um, he is the social responsibility chair of the committee for, for Kroger's. So, I mean, who better than him, you know, to, to, to I mean, this is a, a product that they sell in their stores, you know, and Everybody is so consumed by uh, fair trade coffee or um, palm oil or chocolate, but milk. Yeah, how about right here in our own neighborhood? Right. right. So I mean, that that's the kind of you know we want to give that message to 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 the board member, and you know we asked all of our supporters online to to send that letter, and over three thousand emails were sent um, actually last week. And that's how you can you can take action, um, and and we're open to suggestions. You know, send shoot me an email. You know, let me know how you guys want to. How can we make this um, 
we can share this knowledge about what's happening, how we can all come together and, and, and do something. I mean, UFW alone can't do it, you know, so those consumers, the ones that, you know, feed their children with milk every day and, um, it, I mean, I was surprised that, you know, in schools, everybody drinks, you know, the litter carton of milk and they love it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we're not saying, hey, you know, we're just saying let's work together. Yeah. yeah. All right. Good. Yeah. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you. I really appreciate All it. Right. Good. All right. Good. I want to remind our viewers that the United Farm Workers was originally founded by uh, Cesar Chavez uh, in California. They conducted great lettuce boycotts to get recognition uh, for workers in the in, in those uh, in the fields of California and elsewhere. And so I personally uh, was involved with that as uh, as a teenager uh, with going on uh, on picket lines to Safeway stores and. and uh, and Thriftway stores when, when Thriftway was here in, in the Portland area. And so I have a special place in my heart for the United Farm Workers. And it's really great to know that you're still out there working. It's unfortunate you still have to be out there working, but it's great that you are. Yeah. And so thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having us. Sorry to say, but this is probably one of our last Populist Dialogues programs. Our last program will broadcast starting the week of December 21st. Uh, we might come back later, or we might produce more programs on an irregular schedule. I do want to encourage you to watch us and to subscribe to the programs on YouTube. Uh, that way, when we get more programs, you will be able to receive an email notification that new content is available. You just go to youtube.com slash populistdialogues excuse me, uh, yeah, that's right, uh, youtube.com slash Populous Dialogues and click on the subscribe button. Populous Dialogues has been a project of the Portland Alliance for Democracy. Learn more about us at afd-pdx.org and our national organization at thealliancefordemocracy.org. Thank you for watching. I hope that we'll see you again. Bye. <music> If you think corporations bought free speech before Now that they're human, they'll buy even more Yeah, their money has free speech to me, quite a shock Cause I never heard my money talk When a corporation has a colonoscopy Then I'll believe they're human like me